It's round two of the US Championships and we have a big matchup between Sam Savion and the Mister. Chess speaks for itself, Hans Niemann playing with the black pieces. And for those who are following Chess for a long time, they definitely remember the game from last year between the two. And that was a very special game in which a totally bizarre incident happened. Sam Savion playing with white took the black king, Hans is king, and just took it around and took the crown of the king. And I, I have never seen something like that before. But there's always something happening between these two players. And if it's a bizarre incident like the one I just described. Or in this game I'm going to show you now. Anyway, you get entertained. I'll promise that. Watch this. Subscribe to the channel for more entertaining games. Let's have a look. Some Savion goes for the Catalan opening. So it's d4, knight of 6. And very soon he is going to Fianchetto, the bishop. All very standard play. The first 10 moves or so, it's just very well-known theory and has been played numerous times by uh, very strong uh, grandmasters, of course. So D takes C4 and white is going to regain the pawn with its queen. And black's main goal here is to grab some space on the queen side, kick the queen away. And uh, after the queen drops back to c2, the bishop is on b7. And that's very important. That's black's, usually black's worst piece. And now there's no pressure for white on this uh, diagonal. At least that's the main goal of black trying to solve the problem with uh, the light squared bishop. Bishop d2. And this is getting very interesting because this bishop is intending to go to a5 probably to attack the pawn on c7 together with the queen and even the rook can come over to c1. So there is definitely still some pressure for white on this uh, c file. But nowadays it has been established there are various ways for black to, um, to get a comfortable game. And one of these moves here is rook a7. This looks totally bizarre if you're new to the game. But anyway, this is um, very instructive because right now this rook looks very bad. But very soon the rook will be active. So keep an eye on that piece. The main move is rook c1 after which bishop e4 is going to be played to uh, attack the queen. And now the pawn cannot be taken on c7 as the rook protects the pawn. Anyway, Savion played here the move a4, uh, questioning the pawn on uh, b5. Black goes b4, bishop g5. And after knight bd7, now the bishop is no longer standing in the way so that the knight can be developed to, uh, to d2. And another instructive move. Black places its queen in the corner. This may look totally bizarre, but also this is well-known strategy in the Catalan. Black is having a very nice setup with the queen and bishop. And pawn on c7 cannot be taken. It just runs into bishop takes f3 when the queen on c7 is hanging. So no time for white to uh, recapture the bishop on f3. There are various ways for, for white to, to proceed now. But black's main plan is to go ahead now with c5 next and get a rook to the c file. White played, in my opinion, not such a great move. Knight e1 offering the exchange of bishops. And now black gets in the move c5. Liberating its position, getting rid of the backward c pawn is a very important uh, strategy. And if you do take the pawn, then the rook will probably come to c5 and... Next move, the pawn will be regained as three pieces are attacking the pawn on c5. Anyway, bishop takes f6 was played. And now various interesting uh, moves. You can recapture in three possible ways. Bishop takes f6 is maybe the best move. It looks very nice to have the bishop uh, there. But Hans decides to recapture with a g-pawn. And this is an ambitious move. Why does he weaken its own king side. Well, he wants to maintain control over the pawn on c5 with both its knight and bishop. Knight b3 was played. C takes d4. Well, the pawn can be recaptured. But first, white wants to gain control over the c file. So black cannot put a rook there himself. And sticking to the pawn with a move like e5 is positionally very risky. You are weakening your light squares and the key move would be knight h4 intending to install the knight on f5 with excellent prospects for uh, for white so what black does is just play actively with the move knight e5 now white does recapture the pawn on d4 now the rook comes to d8 to attack the knight knight goes back to b3 and now rook a d7 and black is more than fine i like black's position there are two open files. One is occupied by the white 
queen and rook and the black rooks they are controlling the d file why do i like black here well i think the queen even though it's standing in the corner it's quite active and uh, the knight on e5 looks great and it's not clear how white is going to take advantage of the slight uh, exposed uh, black king knight f4 played but wait a second i said slight exposed king hans goes for king g7 not minding the move knight h5 king h6 just attacking that knight and the knight goes uh, back to f4 so this is a silent draw offer white was just checking what is black gonna do with its king and the king can just go back and then possibly it's gonna lead to a draw but hans says well my king is not risking anything here i just play here the move f5 interesting uh, decision so that the bishop can later come to uh, to f6 knight went back to g2 king g7 anyway king feels a little bit more safe there queen to b1 opening up the file for the rook bishop f6 so long term we have some pressure against that pawn on b2 but it does allow the rook to come to c5 knight goes back to g6 keeping the knight out from the f4 square Rook goes back to c4, attacking the pawn on b4, bishop to e7, a lot of maneuvering, but still all the major pieces on the board, it's potentially a very hot game, like anything can happen with these pieces still on the board. So queen c2, that was the idea, now the rook is in front, the queen comes back, and white is slight, slowly improving its own position, and Hans... He's an active player. He is not going to sit and wait. He is not going for a boring draw. Look, guys, he plays h5. He wants to bring up its h-pawn to launch an attack and maybe open up a file, maybe put a pawn on h3 to create some mating threats together with the queen. Anyway, white says, I'm going to block your pawn. h4 played. And now, well, if you go knight e5, the rook can still come to, uh, to c7. So first, queen b8 played with the idea to go knight e5 when the rook on c4 is short on uh, square. So the queen goes back to c1 so that in case of knight e5, the rook can still drop back and white is still uh, okay. Anyway, instead of knight e5, bishop f6 was played. So the queen also protects the pawn on uh, b4. Knight a5, intending knight c6 with a knight fork on queen and rook, queen b6, knight b3 back. Queen b8, knight a5. We have another repetition. Queen b6, knight b3. Queen b queen b8 can just be played again. But Hans said, no way. I'm going to just make a waiting move. I want to keep the game going. And this move, king h7, to me, it has absolutely no meaning. It's, it's, it's just a really bizarre idea. If you follow the channel already for some time, you remember maybe that famous uh, scandalous game between Vladimir Kramnik and Hans Niemann. And in that game... Hans also played a very similar king move just to wait and keep the game going. Knight f4 played, offering the exchange of knights and you're attacking that pawn on h5. But look, knight e5 played, attacking the rook. Rook goes to c5. And here, interesting moment, a lot of things can be played. Maybe the knight can come to g4, but Hans went back with the queen to b7. And look, this pawn on h5 is just hanging. This is a clear drawback. Of, uh, of Black's uh, play in the, in the previous number of moves. The pawn is just gone and the bishop is under threat. So bishop has to go back to, uh, to h8 to keep the king uh, guarded. Queen c2, rook g8. Pawn sacrifice. Black has a pawn down, but looking for counterplay on the g file. Now the knight goes back. White is just a full pawn up. And here, both players are really low on time. It's a really bizarre time uh, trouble uh, game and Hans with just a few seconds I think it was around five seconds on the clock he wanted to put a knight on on g4 he played knight g4 but hold the piece in his hand and then realized that this is bad he didn't want to play it because there is rook takes f5 which is a crushing idea after taking the rook queen takes it's a check the king gotta go away you give another check and after king g7, you can already take the knight on g4 and you have a lot of pawns for the exchange, but even stronger is knight c5 and you probably will win even more material. Back to the game. Hans had his piece in his hand, didn't want to play knight g4 and just with one second on the clock, he played the move knight g6. Absolutely incredible. He, he didn't realize he had one second 
left on the clock only when he got an additional 30 seconds, so he was back to 31 seconds, he realized that he almost lost on time. Anyway, now it's Knight takes G6, Rook takes G6, players reached move 40, they get additional time on the clock, so the time trouble was over. But that was a really, really tense moment. Rook C1, now White is continuing with the activation of all its pieces, and now Queen B6. That's an interesting move, because if the Rook goes away, then you see the pawn on F2 is pinned, and it would allow Rook takes G3. Anyway, what White should do is try to take advantage of that exposed king. A really good move is E4. To challenge that pawn was not played in the game. I think that Savion didn't like F4, but after E5, now the Rook is kind of stuck, and uh, White is just totally in control. This would probably have been a winning advantage for, uh, for White. But there followed rook d1, going for the exchange of rooks. Very interesting, but you're giving back the pawn, as the pawn on b2 can now be taken by the bishop. White's idea was to enter with the queen on d7 to attack the pawn on, uh, on f7. And this is incredibly dangerous, even with plans of playing a5 next to, uh, to show that the queen on b6 doesn't have that many uh, good squares to go to. Rook g7 played. And first, the move e3. Solid move to close this diagonal. No rook takes g3 tricks anytime soon. Queen b8 played. So there are possible ideas to go for rook takes g3, hoping for some counterplay against the king. And if you run away with the king to the center, I think that would be a good strategy. The king is most safely placed on e1 because all these sacrifices on g3, they are not dangerous uh, at, at all. But king g2 was played, now queen a8 check again, and the rook went to c6. It looks maybe a little strange to place your rook in a pin your, yourself. Bishop e5 played, and now queen c8. This is another interesting moment in which Hans had already declined two times a repetition. Now he has the possibility to exchange queens. If you do that, this endgame and if you go for rook g8, it's probably okay because white has an extra pawn on the h-file, black has one on, on the b-file, so neither side is able to make a lot of uh, progress. But Hans, look what Hans is doing, guys. He is the entertainer of the US Championships. He played the move queen a7. He keeps the queen on the board. After rook takes a6, he's sacrificing the pawn. He swings over with the queen to e7. With the idea to go queen takes h4, the pawn on g3 is pinned, and they are devastating it attacking ideas against the white king. Rook a8 played, so that queen takes h4 can be met by queen h8, and you're losing the queen on h4 after the king moves. Hans went for rook g4, and that's a very nice defensive move, because there are, there's a battery of queen and rook on the 8th rank, but they are not dangerous. The rook covers g8, and the bishop covers h8. So the threats have been parried. King goes to f1 now, but... Maybe that was a dangerous uh, plan because there is this move queen d6 and the queen is on its way to d1 to give a check. Now queen b7 was played, attacking the pawn on f7. Queen d1, king g2. And here another very interesting moment because it's absolutely not clear who is playing for a win. Well, we, we can see that there's one forcing move. It's rook takes g3 check, was not played in the game. But it's very relevant for understanding this situation. It's a rook sacrifice and it could potentially lead to a repetition because there's no way the king can escape from the checks. If you go to h3, there's queen g4 and the queen will come back. But Hans apparently is no longer interested in making a draw. He is playing for a win and captures that knight on b3, allowing the queen to take on f7, which is incredibly dangerous because where are you going with the king? Well, if you block with your rook, it's queen h5 with checkmate. You definitely can't do that. Maybe you can block with the bishop, but there are other ideas like queen h5, bishop h6, and maybe there's another check. It's not really clear what, uh, what's, what's going to happen, or maybe you can even play queen e8. Look, your piece up here is black, but there are no checks, and white is the one with the initiative. Anyway, in the game, Hans played here the move king to h6. And this is crucial because there are no good checks. The queen on b3 protects the pawn. And it's very understandable that the move queen f8 was played in the game, but that's a mistake. It's a decisive mistake. White should have 
instead played here the move rook a5 another very difficult move you're attacking the bishop and uh, if the bishop goes away the idea is that you can take the pawn on f5 with your rook exploiting this pin the pawn on e6 is pinned can't take the rook as the queen will be hanging you're threatening checkmate on h5 instead of that you may instead go for bishop takes g3 uh, looking for some uh, checks with your queen but now white can also play queen f6 and probably this is going to lead to uh, to a draw at uh, at some point but back to the game queen f8 played bishop g7 bishop just blocks queen to d6 i mean white still has two pawns for the bishop it doesn't seem to be that simple but hans plays the move queen c4 that's an excellent move you keep the pawn protected your idea is to go queen e4 check winning the rook on a8 rook e8 played so the rook attacks the pawn on e6 and well there are very solid players who think ah i can exchange queens with the move queen d5 and i'm a piece of the end game should be winning probably it's winning it's actually not that simple because white also has a outside past a pawn but hans has realized that everything is under control now the bishop is in defense he can ignore white's threat plays the move b3 ready to promote a b pawn rook takes e6 and the king goes back to h7 queen d7 was played i mean there's nothing really else you can uh, do here b2 you're just one move away from queening rook b6 rook gets behind and now, uh, okay, queen takes f5 is, of course, a serious threat. So you give a check yourself and you're protecting the pawn. And another point is that after f3, even though it's a double attack, you give another check with your queen on c2. If you go to the back rank, you promote with check and it's game over. King h3 was played. Are you going to move the rook? No way. You just promote your pawn. You get a second queen. White takes it off the board. Queen recaptures your rook. And the bishop down the position is absolutely hopeless and of course that's also because of f takes g4 which was played in the game allowing queen h1 with checkmate and hans wins round two after missing a win in the first round he is back in business he played an absolutely incredible game to defeat some savion and let me know in the comments what do you think of hans play i think that very aggressive play the way hans is playing it will pay off in the end so that's a strategy you can try to apply yourself don't play for solid uh, games don't settle for repetition early on just try to put the pressure even though it's not clear what you should do you saw what hans did in the game re reacting two times a draw offer a silent uh, draw offer i mean with a repetition of moves and even uh, ignoring the exchange of queens he wanted to play on no matter what so fascinating encounter hope you liked it and uh, definitely more good stuff from Hans from the US Championship on this channel.